everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video on Mono Sports Talk. So in this video, this is the second part of the NFL Free Agency Frenzy. So let's get to it. Before we get to it, go ahead and hit the like button below and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I've come out with some some uh, NFL content and NBA content while was going on, so please go check it out and please subscribe. Also, please enable push notifications so you can get a notification every time I drop a new video, so please go ahead and do that. So let's get to it. So in my previous video, Free Agency Friends You Want, if you haven't checked that out, go check it out right now. The link should be above you guys, right above in the top right corner. So uh, we talked about Tom Brady and his move to Tampa Bay, TB to TB. Um, really one of the biggest moves we've seen in Free Agency. And I think it's good for Brady. He finally gets, you know, the respect and payment that he probably deserves. He's getting uh, two years, $30 million each. Very good for Tom Brady after repeatedly, you know, lowering his salary to help the team win. But now he gets a, a good salary for considering how good of a player Tom Brady is. And he has weapons, much better weapons than he did in New England. Right now, with Chris Godwin, emerging great receiver, and Mike Evans, you know, that jump ball guy, he's pretty good. Um, so, got two good receivers. He got that tight end, O.J. Howard, he's also pretty good. He has O-line, you know, some guys on the O-line. You have um, DeMar Doxon, he's, he's one of their best pass protectors. And defensively, they have some linebackers. You look, look at Devin White, really fast linebacker. You have Levante David. Another great linebacker. And then on the front, you have Nadam Kinsu. So you'll have some pieces on the defensive end as well. So it might work out over there for Tom Brady. Tom Brady could take them up to the next level as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers want to do with the Bruce Arians. So, you know, that's going to be fun to watch, seeing him in a new uniform. So anyway, so now we're going to be talking about, you know, the second wave of free agency has really been with the cornerbacks, the guys, I mean, who are guarding the receivers. The receivers had this crazy last week where they were being traded and signed all over the place, and now it's a cornerback's turn, the guy, cornerback's turns, the guy, guys who are, like, guarding the wide receivers are now getting traded all over the place. So let's get started with probably the biggest name in the uh, trading, trading market as of... Uh, this week we have Darius Slay, or Big Play Slay, as many people like to call him. Darius Slay, yes, he does many big plays. It, it is a good nickname. Has been traded to the Philadelphia Eagles. He signed a three-year, $50 million deal with them. The Lions only get a third and a fifth round pick. So overall, it's not that great of a return for Slay, considering um, he's one of the top corners in the league. You couldn't even get a first-round pick or a second-round pick. Uh, considering Jalen Ramsey was traded last year, he they got two first-round picks for him, the LA Rams. But um, uh, the Lions couldn't really get as great of a return. But Philadelphia, much, much needed uh, asset here, much needed corner. They have now a number one corner that can lock down one side of the field. They really desperately needed that, and they moved on from, like, having – temporarily, uh, just temporary corners in Ronald Darby and, like, Rasul Douglas. And now you have this top, top guy in Darius Slay. So he's going to be matching up against uh, Amari Cooper two times a year. That's going to be fun to watch against the Cowboys. Um, yeah, it's going to be really good to see how these two guys match up. Um, now let's move on to the next one. This also has to do with the Lions. We have Desmond Trufant signing with the Lions from the Atlanta Falcons. He was released from Atlanta, signed a two-year, $21 million deal. I don't think he's as good as Darius Slay. He's had some injury problems, hasn't been as good as he was before. Um, but we'll see if he can return back to what he was with the Detroit Lions. Um, he's going to be their top corner over there. Trying to, um, he's replacing Darius Slay, basically. Now, Chris Harris Jr., one of the top corners. He's a little bit on the older side now, but 
one of the top corners we've ever seen, you know, part of that no-fly zone back in 2000, I think, 15, where the uh, Broncos won the Super Bowl, and Chris Harris was a big part of that in the secondary. So now he's signed with the Chargers. He's moved on from Denver, and now he's signed with the Chargers two years, $20 million. Really good. The, the Chargers are turning into some kind of team now, by the way. I mean... Their defense is looking insane. It's getting stacked, especially their secondary now. You have Casey Hayward already, who was the number one. Now you have Chris Harris, and then you add Derwin James and then Desmond King. So the secondary is really good. Obviously, Casey Hayward and Chris Harris, they're both on the older side, but I think they should be good. The LA Chargers are looking really nice, have made plenty of moves, but... The main issue is going to be their quarterback because they haven't really got a quarterback yet. They're probably going to draft one. So, um, those are the three corners. We also have a big trade. We have the Redskins trading Quinton Dunbar to Seattle for a fifth-round pick. So, I'd say it's pretty good for Seattle. They only have to give up a fifth-round pick for Quinton Dunbar, who has been pretty good last year. He was really good with the Redskins. Uh, one of the better cornerbacks they had over there. And I was traded to a team where they could possibly, you know, make the playoffs and have some winning, you know. Uh, Pete Carroll, really good coach, really good defensive coach, could make him even better. He, my phone, but okay. Anyway, the up, he has really good upside, but um, he's still very young and very athletic corner. So really like what Seattle got here, a really good asset. And then obviously we have other corners like Nickel Roby Coleman. He also signed with the Eagles one year, just $1 million. Very cheap. You hardly see these kind of deals, but um, uh, he's a pretty good corner. You remember him in uh, the LA Rams, and another corner should help Philly quite a bit. So now we're also going to be talking about <clears throat> Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Yeah, Ha Ha. He's, he's really funny. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. I don't know why his name is Ha Ha. What kind of name is that? But anyway. <laughs> he signed with Dallas, one year, $4 million. And this is a good move for Dallas, you know. They finally got the safety problem. You know, they've had a safety problem for so long. And, you know, it's about time they address it. And now they have a pretty good safety. Obviously, he's not the top of top of the safeties. But um, he's pretty good. I think he, he's better than Jeff Heath. Um problem is he can give up some big plays, which you do not want. But he has Mike McCarthy as his head coach, which he uh reuniting with from Green Bay. So I think he should be able to fit well here, and I think he'll be good in Dallas. Um, now, let's talk about some big running backs here. We have Melvin Gordon, uh, who did not want to stay with the Chargers, has now signed with the Broncos, two years, $16 million. Hasn't been that great recently. He struggled with injury. He's fumbled too many times and hasn't been that efficient, you know. Uh, but now he's going to Denver where Philip Lindsay was the top running back over there. But I think the Broncos generally want to reduce Philip Lindsay's workload, so they brought in Melvin Gordon. Um, I don't think, you know, Melvin Gordon hasn't really done that great in his NFL career, to be honest. And, um... He's performed, like, not enough that he should. And I don't know, really. I think Philip Lindsay is better right now, and he's going to take away from his, some of his carries. And basically, he's just... To me, I think he should be a backup here. I don't think that's really what he wants, but I think that's what he might be. Because I think Philip Lindsay is better, but maybe the Broncos just want to, you know, balance it out. Anyway, now the bigger name. We have Todd Gurley. Everybody knows Todd Gurley, especially those L.A. people. You know, signed with the Falcons, one year, $6 million, just a one-year contract uh, after the L.A. Rams just moved on from Todd Gurley. I don't know how it's really going to work in L.A. Now they need some sort of running back because the Sean McVay scheme is totally based on, like, the running back. You have the running back doing stretch runs to the outside, and then you have the play action off of it with Jared Goff and their uh, receivers. So... You know, I don't know if Sean McVay might change their scheme, but I don't know how it's really going to work scheme-wise in L.A. now. But for Atlanta, it's really good. Their team is full of first-round picks now. Todd Gray is another one added. Now, I think 
Uh, he could show why he's one of the best running backs, you know. Todd Gurley has a really great offensive line now. And um, he could show, you know, why he's been great, but still has that injury. I don't know what's been going on with him. But um, now the Falcons might have to pay him more. He's already one of the highest paid running backs. And if they want to keep him, they're going to probably have to pay him much more compared to just, you know, drafting running backs. So, um, yeah. Uh, now... Uh, we're going to be talking about more defense. So we have Michael Pierce, one of the best defensive nose tackles we've got in the game, has been uh, signed with the Vikings for three years, $27 million. He is basically replacing Linval Joseph, uh, the guy who was previous there. He's younger, and I think it's a good move, and the Vikings will really enjoy him having it there, having him there. Now we're going to go back to Jeff Heath. Now, we all know the Cowboys replaced Jeff Heath with Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Now Jeff Heath has gone to Oakland. And not Oakland, what am I saying? Las Vegas. To the Raiders, two years, six million dollars. Uh, he's also going to meet up with some of his previous teammates and Malik Collins and Jason Witten. And I think he might be a backup here. Um, linebacker, we have A.J. Klein. You know, from the Saints, he was that guy with the Saints. He signed with the Bills, three years, 18 million. He was a starter at Saints, but I don't know if he'll be a starter here. But he's a really good run stuffer and should be pretty well along with Bill's linebackers, Tremaine Edmonds and Matt Milano, considering uh, Lorenzo Alexander just retired. So, yeah. Um, now we have a trade here. Um, this is related to the XFL, so if you've been watching the XFL, you'd know the MVP, the MVP favorite after... Pretty much while the wide was going on, you know, P.J. Walker. P.J. Walker from the Houston Roughnecks was excellent, was the Patrick Mahomes of that league. And now uh, the Carolina Panthers signed him after they traded Kyle Allen to Washington Redskins. But Teddy Bridgewater is still going to be their starter. Now let's move on to some wide receivers. The wide receivers have been moving on quite a bit here and there. Now... We're going to be starting off with Robbie Anderson, who recently signed with the Carolina Panthers, two years, $20 million, was one of their better, uh, was one of the better top wide receiver free agents, really great speed, has some burners, but will will be working alongside DJ Moore, and I think he'll be better uh, with the Panthers compared to the Jets, because there'll be some, you know, calmness on the offense, you know, you have one quarterback, and you have one scheme, you know, there's not going to be people getting fired all over the place. Hopefully not. And that stability should help Robbie Anderson work a lot better. Uh, I think he's a pretty good wide receiver. Now, the Jets, after they lost Robbie Anderson, now they signed Bashad Perriman. Another really good speedy guy. Um, really can take the top off the defense, you know. I think he has great potential here. And... The Jets really got him for a cheap price, one year, $6 million, that's it. And compared to uh, Robbie Anderson, we have to pay him much, much more. And I think he has great potential here. He did really well in Tampa in the later half of the season uh, last year. So, yeah. And now uh, we have Emmanuel Sanders. So we all know Emmanuel Sanders. He was in the Super Bowl, and we saw Jimmy G overthrow Emmanuel Sanders, blah, blah, blah. But... Anyway, Manuel Sanders, one of the veterans around here, uh, just just played one year with the uh, 49ers, is now signed with the Saints. Two years, $16 million. And the Saints are basically trying to replace Teddy, Teddy, no, Ted Ginn. And they want him to be a second option to Michael Thomas, obviously one of the best receivers in the game. Uh, he's pretty fast, you know, a little bit on the old side. Uh, I think he needs to stay healthy, though, but I think he can be really good for the Saints, you know. They need a second option to Michael Thomas for the wide receivers. Uh, now for tight ends, we have Eric Ebron, who signed with the Steelers. Um, two years, $12 million, and will compete with Vance McDonald and Nick Vanette. And I think he can be better than both of them. He's much more athletic. So, I mean, we've seen this guy jump over people, catch one-handed, but... Catching has been an issue for him, so he has to be able to catch. You know, he has to catch the ball if you want to be, you know, the top tight ends. So that wraps up the NFL Free Agency Frenzy Recap number two. Uh, 
so many like trades, so many signings, so I had to make two videos for this. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you finally like get to understand like what's been going on in the NFL recently. Uh, once again, please hit the like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Go down in the comment section. Uh, tell me what you guys think of any of these moves. And uh, yeah, um, see you guys later in the next video. Bye.